Welcome to the fifth module of this course. We are going to work with some calcium imaging data that were recorded over time. As you'll see in the first few videos, calcium imaging data requires some image processing in order to reduce irrelevant background signal and to identify the neuron cell bodies in the images. So that's going to take up most of the module. And then we will also perform a PCA or principal components analysis on the neuron time series. This module relies on the image processing toolbox in MATLAB. So neurons are pretty complicated little biological machines. There are myriad chemical and physical dynamics happening inside of each cell. And it turns out that calcium is involved in a lot of these intracellular processes. That means that when a neuron is active, a lot of calcium is being transported around the cell. Now, scientists have figured out a way to create fluorophore-based calcium binding indicators, which means that calcium dynamics can be measured using microscopes. So calcium imaging is a really versatile method and the spatial resolution of calcium imaging is basically limited by the microscope. For example, here you see calcium dynamics in individual dendrites and even individual spines of a single neuron. And here you see calcium dynamics zoomed out to a larger area of the brain. So each of these little green circles here corresponds to the cell body of a neuron. And each of these traces, each of these time courses here, is the calcium time series from an individual neuron. You can see there's a lot of small fluctuations and these occasional large deflections, these large spikes in the calcium time series. Those spikes correspond to action potentials, which you see better um, in this slide here. So these are data from simultaneously recorded electrophysiology, which we worked with in modules one and three, and fluorescence dynamics from the same neuron. And it's actually pretty interesting to see that they correspond reasonably well, but they also don't match perfectly. And this kind of highlights the richness and the complexity of intracellular electrochemical properties. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about working with calcium imaging data. Of course, the microscope doesn't know what is a neuron and what isn't. The microscope data are simply images with intensity values at each pixel. It's up to us, the researchers, to identify the cell bodies in the image. And there are basically two ways, two approaches of identifying neuron cell bodies in calcium imaging data. You can do it manually by drawing out which pixels correspond to neuron cell bodies. This method is fast and it's easy and it's highly accurate, but it's only practical if you have a small number of neurons, let's say you know maybe a couple of tens of neurons in the image. If you have more neurons, like dozens or hundreds, maybe even thousands of neurons in the image data, then we need to switch to an automated method for identifying cell bodies. So the second way of identifying neurons is through some algorithm that the computer is running. In this module, we are going to develop an algorithm for cell body extraction based on image intensity. Now, this is not going to be the most advanced method. It's not the most cutting edge method available in modern neuroscience, but you'll see that our um, fairly simple algorithm does a pretty good job. And it's also a really great way to learn about image processing in MATLAB. Furthermore, this will also provide a very enlightening case study for why automated algorithms should be carefully checked. And so with that as a brief introduction, let me now give you the bird's eye view of what we are going to accomplish in this module. After importing the data, we are going to make a movie and animation of the image data over time. Then we'll do some data conversion and use that as an opportunity to learn about memory storage in MATLAB. Then we'll get to working with the actual data. We'll do some image processing to enhance the signal quality. We will apply some temporal filters to further increase the signal to noise ratio. And finally, we'll run a PCA on the uh, extracted cell time series. By the way, if you're not familiar with PCA, then don't worry, I'll give a brief introduction to principal components analysis in this video.